In this chapter, we'll be looking at some basic jQuery effects. We're going to start with the hiding and showing of elements with a very simple jQuery method. I'll demonstrate with this finished file. So I mouse over what appears to be a header around this box of tips for eating out. However, when I mouse over the header, the cursor changes, and when I click, I hide the tips below. When I click again, I expose them. So if you've been developing in HTML or JavaScript or CSS for some time, you're probably familiar with this sort of functionality. And it's been accomplished in the past and is used often today. It's something that we used to call dynamic HTML. So you may be thinking, if we've been doing this for years with dynamic HTML, which is basically JavaScript, HTML, and CSS combined to create an effect like the one you've just seen, then you might think, what do we need jQuery for? Well, this just gives me another opportunity to talk about the power of jQuery in terms of writing code much faster. So while the simple answer is yes, we can do this with dynamic HTML, we can do this with JavaScript in the way that we've done it in the past. But if you've ever done that, you've probably wrestled with the amount of code that you have to write to make sure that your dynamic HTML effect is going to work across all browsers. So there's browser differences in the way that events are handled, and there's some browser differences in regards to CSS. But all of this is handled by your jQuery framework. So again, that's the beauty of jQuery. We get to invoke these very simple methods that hide the complexity of the code that's required to get these effects to work in all browsers. So on the one hand, it's similar to dynamic HTML, but it takes all those pain points out. And it just allows you to call a method that's been tested to work on all browsers. It makes a common API for you to work with. So let's open up our starter file and see how we can use this new jQuery method called the toggle method. And it's going to allow us to control the hiding and displaying of elements. You want to open the file called exercise underscore one dot HTML, which you'll find in the chapter eight working with jQuery effects folder. At the very top, we've got a style tag that styles some of the elements on the page down here. So let's take a look at those elements. We've got an H1 tag and a paragraph, followed by a div whose ID is box. Nested inside that div, we have another div whose ID is box header. We close that div and create a third div whose ID is box content. And that contains the food tips. The box header contains the H1 tag that reads tips for eating out. Those divs are styled up here in the style section. The box div is given a width of 400 pixels. And the header inside of the box header div has got some basic style information for the font, as well as some padding and the height of the box, which is 24 pixels. The box content is floated left, given a border, margins are removed, and a bit of padding is applied on all four sides. Now let's move on to the script block now, where you'll see the empty document ready event function. This is where we'll write the jQuery method called toggle. Before we write that call to the toggle method, let's make sure that the cursor changes to a pointing finger. This will give the user a visual clue that they can click on the header. So we need to locate that header, and we'll do that with jQuery as usual. That was a div, and it was called box header. So there's our jQuery, to which we want to invoke the CSS method of jQuery. And we pass to it the property and the value that we want to change in CSS. So the property is our cursor, and the value of the cursor property will be set to the pointer. Now we need to write the jQuery that accesses the same object, the div, whose ID is box header, and make it clickable. So we'll take that same div, box header, invoke the click event, and pass to it the function that we want to execute. And that function is the toggle method. First of all, we have to identify what it is that we want to toggle. So remember, toggle is a method that's going to dynamically show and hide, depending on the current state of the div, or whatever element, it doesn't have to be a div, so any element that we want to hide and show. So we access the element that we want to hide and show with jQuery, and that was the div that contained the actual food tips on it. It was called box content. So another div whose ID is box content becomes our jQuery selector. And then we simply invoke the method that we want called toggle. So let's go ahead and we'll proofread this, and then we can save the file, and we'll test it in the browser. The first thing that you want to test is your cursor change. So remember, this area here is the box content. And you can see my cursor goes back and forth between the solid arrow and the I-beam when I'm over the text. 
I want to move the cursor now towards the header div and I should see the pointing finger. But remember, we are also invoking the toggle function here, the jQuery toggle. So I'll go ahead and click that and it dynamically handles the hiding of the content div. Click again and it invokes a show. So in this video we learned a very simple way to access a jQuery effect. And there are a huge amount of jQuery effects that you can play around with. So definitely, like the other exercises that we've done in previous chapters, you really want to continue to explore the jQuery framework and see what else we can do. There's a lot more than Toggle.